All right, welcome back. So right now our app is existing in a vacuum. Webpack doesn't know about it. We have Webpack up and running, but it's only bundling this code right here. What we want to do instead is call some code in here that is from our application. And we have these five different application files. Inputs are valid, parse inputs, and so on. And we're going to call some code from this file. So when I bundle this file with npm start, it's going to go grab all the relevant dependencies and put them all into a file, which ideally is going to put all of these five files together for us. But first we have to declare which files depend on what. And the way we do that is by using ES6 imports and exports. So in each file, we're going to indicate what will be exported from this file, as well as making sure to import any relevant dependencies. For example, if we look at this one, alert service, it depends on inputs are valid. So we're going to make that clear. We're going to import inputs are valid, but we actually can't do that yet because we haven't exported anything from that file. So if we look at that, here it is, just a single function. I'm going to export inputs are valid. And then inside of my alert service, I can now import it. Import, and I didn't export default, so I, I need to use the exact name here instead of curly braces. Inputs are valid from, and then the path to that file from alert service is dot slash utils slash inputs are valid. And then while I'm here, I might as well export alert service because we're using that inside of our app.js. You can see right here, I will need to import alert service. But let me just begin by exporting the other thing. So we've got component service. It doesn't have any dependencies in here, as far as I can tell. We have inputs are valid. We're done with that. We exported it. We have, uh, what's the other one? Parse inputs. We will export that. And where are we using parse inputs? I think it's in app. You can see right here, we rely on parse inputs and inputs are valid. So I'm going to copy this line from alert service and move this into app.js at the top. And we also rely on parse inputs from dot slash utils slash parse inputs. Okay. And then we have alert service and component service that we're using in here, but I'm going to hold off on doing that for just a moment because we have to talk about what is going in our index.js, right? This is our entry point. This is where Webpack is going to start. We need to run some code from here that will then send Webpack sniffing down through all the files to figure out the dependencies, to figure out what code needs to be bundled. So we need to have a little window into our application code. And the most logical choice would be to run this function, to call this function from inside of index. This is the function that starts everything. So instead of calling it inside of our app.js, I'm going to delete that. So I export it out of this file. So now inside of my index.js, I can import run from, and then the path to that file from index.js is dot slash, oh, not in the right spot, dot slash app slash app is the name of the file. And then I can call run. But that's not the end of the story because if we look at what run is using, we need to pass in an instance of the alert service and an instance of the component service. So I'm going to cut that out and move it over to index.js, but that's not enough. I can pass in alert service and I can pass in component service, but we still have to import them here. Just like in every other file where we're using something, this is a bad example. Component service, another bad example. Let's look at alert service. We need to import inputs are valid because we're using it in this file. Same thing here. If we're trying to instantiate a new alert service, we need to make, make it very clear we need it. This is going to tell Webpack, all right, we need to make sure alert service has loaded before we can actually create one and pass it in to run. So import alert service from dot slash, what are we? We're inside of index.js. So app slash alert dot service. And then I'll duplicate this. And this other one is component service from app slash component dot service. Okay. Now we should be okay. We'll double check. We're importing everything we need. So importing run alert service and component service. Then we're calling run with the new instances of alert service and component service. App.js now just has this run function, but it also relies on inputs are valid and parse inputs. As you can see, we're using it in here. Uh, inputs are valid, parse inputs, they have no imports, they only export a single function. And then we have component service, it doesn't import anything, but it does export. 
And lastly, alert service, we export it and it relies on inputs are valid. Okay, so let's see what happens now. When we actually run npm start, we now have code. We have a, a, an entry point into our application. It's not just an alert. And Webpack is going to go and I keep saying sniff. <laughs> I don't know why I have that idea in my head, but it's going to burrow down and, and start looking in here and look at what app depends on for run. And it's going to realize, oh, this depends on inputs are valid and parse inputs. And then it's going to check those. Do they have any imports? Do they export something? And it's going to keep going and, and essentially form a tree for us. So let's see what happens when I run npm start. Hopefully, I don't have any typos. Okay. Now let's look at what it built for us in the dist directory main.js. Now we can see all of our code is down here. Shortly, we'll address what all of this is, but all of our code is here. It's not just a single alert anymore. And we have our script included, as you can see, dist slash main.js. The true test will be if we can remove all of these scripts that were there before and just have this one main.js file and have everything work still. So let's see, I'm gonna refresh the page. It looks like it's working. Okay, looks good. And if we go to our sources tab, what we can see inside of our dist, there's a main.js. It's minified, it's hard to read and understand. Uh, we will talk about that, but it's working. All of our code is loading, it's being bundled into a single file. So it doesn't matter you know, which order we're writing these files in, we don't have to indicate you know, this file must load first and this one must load second. We just indicate this file depends on this and this. And then Webpack takes care of the rest. It makes sure that everything is loaded in a valid order. Okay, so I just committed the code. Again, if you're following along, everything I just did is in the fourth commit. I'll just show you the git log so far. Right here, Webpack now bundling all our code. That's what we just set up. So we still haven't configured Webpack to do anything beyond the default configuration. That's coming up next, but it's at least running all of our code. It's bundling it all together, making sure everything is in the correct order or making sure that the dependencies are managed nicely. And then we include a single script tag and all of our code works. So this would apply instead of four files where we have 40 lines of code, the same idea applies where we have 100 files with 50 or 100 lines each, as long as we write explicitly what each file depends on and what it exports. Okay, next we're going to configure Webpack. We got to set up our own configuration file and we'll dive into what's actually happening in this main.js file. If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe please, turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that. Anyway, uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.